Welcome to the Greenway Outdoors podcast. The Greenway Outdoors is also an internationally syndicated TV show on Pursuit Channel and Wild TV. You are now tuned into our weekly podcast hosted by executive producer Kyle Green, production coordinator Jeff Hutchinson, director AJ Beadle, and creative producer Ryan Parks. We live in a world where our natural resources are almost solely protected by funds raised by hunters and fishermen, with over 60% of those funds coming from white males over the age of 55. The Green Bay Outdoors team has set out on a mission to create content that would inspire millennials, Generation Z, and new sportsmen and women to get out, hunt, fish, and contribute towards conservation and the betterment of our planet. Welcome to the Green Bay Outdoors. Hello and welcome to episode four of the Greenway Outdoors podcast, which is coming to you one week late. Ooh, whose fault is that? Um, we're gonna go with AJ's. God's. We're gonna go with, <laughs> no. yeah. we're gonna go with AJ's fault. What I, do you have to say about that, AJ? AJ's not here today. Rest in peace. You're confusing the whole camera staff because they're trying to rest in peace. <laughs> Jeez. You're confusing the whole camera staff because they go to move the camera to AJ and he's like not there. That would have been good for comedic effect. <laughs> Yeah, that would have been good. I don't think they were ready for it, considering he's not here. Anyways, I'm Jeff Hutchinson. Mm. I'm Ryan Parks. And I'm Kyle Green. Again. I've recovered from, I don't think (laughs) I said it in the beginning. I've recovered from my illness. I managed to get mono and strep throat at the same time, which Mm -hmm. I didn't know was a thing. I had that, and it was like six years ago, and I coughed up blood for like two weeks. It was god awful. I also coughed up blood. Yeah. Yeah. But I had a fever for seven days straight, which is why we weren't able to record last Wednesday. Yeah. 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 And not only did we miss out on that, we missed out on a lot of trips. <laughs> we missed out on Ribeye of the Sky, which we've only been talking about for like maybe three years. So pretty. It wasn't just. Ri- I mean, and not only that, I think Brian Baker was a little mad at us too. He was nice about it, but you know, he's like, all right, guys. <laughs> you know, he's like, <laughs> yeah. He's like nice, but he's like, he was like, no, he's like, we'll reschedule. That's not a big deal. But, like, you know, we called to As cancel. As he deletes our number from his phone. <laughs> yeah. We called to cancel, like, the day we were supposed to be flying out. We're like, we waited till last second to make sure that we couldn't come. And I know that's kind of a jerk move, but. I just kept thinking I didn't want to cancel, you know. like I, I'd never had an illness that took me out for two full weeks. So I was like, I'll recover. I'll be fine. I'll get mm-hmm. it. But we didn't get it. And we missed uh, muskrat trapping with Ray. And Ray's actually going to call in today to talk about muskrat trapping because we are going to be doing that. Um, we've rescheduled it for the weekend of December 1st and 2nd, which I'm pretty excited nice. about mm-hmm. um, because the storyline behind muskrat trapping is is pretty cool. We know Chief Billy of the Wyandotte Nation, and Chief Billy taught us about how during the War of 1812, the muskrat actually kept people alive uh, because it was a horrible winter. Mm-hmm. And the War of 1812 was fought here in like Detroit. People don't even realize yeah. that. And Wyandotte and Brownstown and all those things. And Chief Billy's great, 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 great grandfather, I think, was. Um, Stupid. It's great, 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 <laughs> great. great. <laughs> His uh, knows that. was uh, um, Brown, the guy who um, was actually uh, captured, I believe, as a, a kid. And he was a he was a white kid. I was like, he was a white. I don't know. I didn't know what to say for that. But he was Caucasian. Yeah. And uh, he was trapped and then raised as an Indian and eventually became the chief. And that's like that's crazy. That's Cheap Billy's bloodline. That'd be a good movie. Yeah. Oh, that would Cheap, be a good movie. Cheap Billy would be a great movie. You never saw Cheap Billy's movie? <laughs> oh, there is. No. <laughs> <laughs> they played it on loop at his hotel. No, no yeah. kidding. <laughs> right in the lobby. <laughs> <laughs> it no. was on Hallmark. <laughs> <laughs> but no, he. Um, yeah. So the the War of eighteen twelve. It was a horrible winter, and it was all fought right here. Um, and you had the French uh, French town. You had the um, the British coming from Canada. You had the Native Americans, the Wyandotte tribe especially, and uh, you had the Americans. And, like, it's cool that the Americans won, but, like, if you really looked at, like, who was probably doing mean stuff, (laughs) you might not think that the Americans were, like, the greatest in that war if you really look at the storyline. But I learned a lot about it. And all of those sides, though, survived off of muskrat meat and fur uh, for trade as well as food as well as clothing. Uh, during hmm. the War of 1812. So I wanted to highlight that by having Chief Billy on an episode and also do muskrat trapping with Ray. And Ray from Hot Shot Outfitters, which you see his commercial during our TV show, you see his commercial mm-hmm. during once the podcast twice. as well. Yeah, once or <laughs> twice. Uh, during the podcast, he actually 
big into rabbit hunting, big into deer hunting, everything like that. But he's like, I'm a muskrat trapper by trade. That's his claim to fame. But you say that to him, but then you bring up muskrat trapping. He's like, well, we can do it if you want to, but do you want to go deer hunting? Like he'd like, <laughs> he'd much rather go deer hunting. Yeah, maybe. well, because he doesn't do that for like, you know, he doesn't bring people in and do muskrat trapping. He brings people in to deer hunt to goose hunt because you say, oh, let's go muskrat trapping. Ninety percent of hunters aren't going to want to probably go do that they'd rather do a deer hunt or a goose hunt or i'm excited about it yeah. i'm excited too i've I'm never seen about are it. we actually trapping or are we we're trapping hunting? we're trapping no, we're trapping. Okay. We're trapping i don't yeah. even know the legalities of hunting of them I, my, don't, I don't think that's a thing my main concern is uh cooking them because I've, I've been told that they have they're called a musk rat and they have a musk gland and that just like every other mammal, that doesn't has sound a gland. Like every other sixty-five-year-old plus male that wears musk. Musk gland. <laughs> <laughs> this is an old spice muskrat. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually yeah. You got to get those glands out and clean them properly. Yeah. But I'm sure Ray knows. He'll yeah. teach us. That's and true. You, you, you've got to eat the meat first on camera. So <laughs> yeah, that was a that was a thing that we established as kids that I <laughs> I'd be too scared to. Jeffrey eat would stuff. have to try it first. No, because <laughs> otherwise we sit there and he'll go. Uh, were you scared of food? Yeah. Why? He doesn't. He, he's very picky. He doesn't <coughs> eat. You're picky. We, hey, listen. I'm not picky. Listen. We went to an all-you-can-eat crab leg buffet. I'm not proud of it. He didn't eat crab. But he went. <laughs> no, no, no. He went there. He got crab and he dipped it in ketchup. Oh my! Any you're steak evil. That we've ever had. He dips it in ketchup. I like ketchup a lot. Oh my god. Yeah. I never right. did grow out of that. He's one of those kids that, like, you give him a chicken nugget and he likes it, but you give him something else that's chicken and it's, like, a different shape and he won't eat it because it probably tastes different. It's like, okay, it's I the can same understand thing. that it's one, kind of. <laughs> what? It's the same thing. It's just a different shape. So it tastes the same. Yeah. The, the all you can eat buffet we went to, though, was dingy and super sketchy. And a lot of the crab legs didn't have, they weren't consistently cooked. Oh. So I was real worried about it. So what I would do is dip in ketchup because that fixes. That would everything. make it safer. <laughs> yeah, but I would be like, Jeffrey, this one feels a little weird. You take a bite out of this one. Tell me if it's okay. <laughs> so I you... would just take that one because I'm not gonna go <laughs> to take a bite. Yep, it's good. Here you go. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, M- Mama Bird, Baby Bird, it to him. <laughs> Jeffrey, <laughs> sample this, please. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, it's like a really when you're best friends and live across the street from each other since you're five. It's like. You learn each other's weirdnesses like pretty. You start to question your priorities. <laughs> yeah. That wasn't very nice. <laughs> I know you didn't mean that. Yeah. But, we know each other so well. But even so, knowing each other our whole lives, I grew up in a family that was really close with the Tamios, Pete Tamio, who uh, owns a bunch of land up north. And we do a deer camp every year. And that's where we go to for deer camp. And it's an awesome, awesome pieces and pieces of property that we deer hunt on every year. That's a weird. Well, I was going to say peace, and then I was like, that's not a good representation because there's pieces. There's lots of parcels. Many, much, many pieces. Yeah, the land spread out all over the place. Yeah, it's yeah. really neat. Parcels of land. And uh, um, this was uh, Jeffrey's first year going without me. Yeah. There was uh, actually, it was really nice. There was no drama. We all just hung out. It was quiet. Talked. You know, people got deer, mm-hmm. brought them in. We congratulated them. We wished each other good luck when we right. left. We ate food, had great food, and there was no bickering, no... Oh, you should wow. have heard what he said. She said, well, I guess Kyle wasn't there, so there's no she said. Uh, but, uh, <coughs> but, yeah, there was a lot of uh, just a lot of chill people having a good time. Yeah. It was great. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> wow. I'm sorry, what? Kyle. <laughs> so for all the food you made him eat in the past. And yeah. we missed two He's trips. <laughs> and we missed two trips. Yeah, we missed Rabbi a lot. of the sky. We're actually, like, I don't mean to alarm everyone, but, like, we're in real big trouble. Like, this is not really podcast related, but like we're way behind on filming now. <laughs> yeah. We were behind on filming. Me getting now we're sick extra for two behind. weeks during when Made we were supposed worse. to film four episodes. Yeah. We lost four episodes because of me. So yeah. I hope you weren't planning on having like Christmas. Because <laughs> <laughs> we're going to. It's gone. We're gonna, we got some stuff. Yeah. yeah. We're, gonna need we're hunting Christmas Eve. I'm just kidding. That would have well, been funnier if AJ was here because he'd be like, what? He, he would have <laughs> been mad. You know he would do it, but he'd be like, but. <laughs> you could do it though. <laughs> yeah. You do it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, philosophical question number one. This was clearly a Jeffrey one. Uh, why don't you go ahead and say it, Jeff? Okay. So it's been how long since November 8th? It's what? At least two weeks now. The 21st, I think. Yeah. So it's been that long, and I still see political <coughs> signs up on the side of the road. At what point is that littering? 
Is it the blame? Like, are you blaming <laughs> with this the election? representative with or this, the, this I election? I don't know who's like who's responsible. Clearly, no one's responsible for it because there's like someone owns it. We're in Michigan, so there's there's Stabenow, there's John James, there's Shooty, there's who who was the you've said enough. I don't think you yeah, whatever. <laughs> but anyways, they're, they're like they're up and they're everywhere, and like I'm sure they probably they collected most of them, but there's still some out, and it's like. All right, let's just take this poster. There was one for a judge. I don't remember what the judge's name was, but it was an eight foot long by four foot tall poster, and it came disconnected. And I'm watching it blow down the road, and I'm like, "That's that can't be Dangerous. good." So I'm gonna go get it. So I'm like, "Okay, I'll kind of stalk up on it, and then as it <laughs> lands, I'll jump on top of it." Well, as I went to jump on top of it, wind blew, and it came up and got me, and it. It didn't pick me up off the ground, but it came Pushed close. Pushed you back. You it came close. And, I, and then, then I'm holding it, trying to bring it in, and it's windy, so I'm like, I wish I was there for it that. Was, it was actually funny. He had me on speakerphone in his truck through Bluetooth, so I could hear him. He goes, oh, Lord Jesus. <laughs> no. <I'm just> <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he said that. Oh, Lord. <laughs> he goes, he, goes uh, he sounds like a um, 65-year-old um, animated um, African-American woman when he is stressed. I don't think that's the yep. case. Yep, that's what he does. He I don't know. Right? There's a I'll bit have of to watch for that. Right? <laughs> <laughs> um, hmm. <laughs> second philosophical question. This one I was actually thinking about last night. I was scrolling on my phone in bed, and uh, um, I was looking at uh, like different advertisements and stuff like that for like possible partners for the show. And one I saw was like for headphones, and there are the headphones where you're, like you can be shooting, and while shooting. You can hear everything, but then when there's a loud noise, it dampens that for you. Yeah, I have some of those. Like yeah. noise canceling? Mm-hmm. But only for specifics. So, like, because one of the problems with, like, earplugs is, like, what? <laughs> You're, like, yeah. yelling at each other in oh, the yeah. I, I Like, shooting. Right. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I kind of want those. And it's funny because up until, like, well, last night, I had no thoughts of ever getting headphones or any toward a t- type of, like, protective eyewear or protective headgear or headphones of any kind whatsoever. But now, I'm like, yeah. So is it like an old, because now I'm getting scared because I can't hear nothing. And it's like, between yeah. listening to my Beats headphones every single day and at the in gym. In ear turned up all the way. At the gym. Yeah. Shout out Beats by Dre. No, he, he's not actually sponsoring us. And then, uh, but, sure. but now it's like, at what point in your, like, age where you, do you switch from be like not caring about nothing to like i might need to hear when i'm 60 when you I think i'm already that you're to that starting to lose your hearing that's yeah. when you go oh okay <laughs> <laughs> and we shoot guns so much that i probably should have thought of this a while ago but i never yeah. did like it was never a priority but ray doesn't do it ray doesn't wear headphones it's because he's like superman he can't hear nothing though yeah that's true he doesn't want to hear nothing Mm-mm. yeah i've got a pair like that though that once it gets over a certain decibel it's for shooting Mm-hmm. Yeah, and they work great. I mean, turns see, off, or you yeah. can like turn them on and they like amplify stuff so you can hear everything around yeah. you until there's a loud noise and then it turns off. Yeah, it's, and really it's like cool. you can hear like someone fifty yards away, just, like barely moving their foot and crunching the leaves. Yeah, it's yeah. pretty cool. Yeah, that's awesome. And that that was like that solved the one problem that I had because I was like, I don't want to not hear stuff while I'm out there. No, yeah. it makes you hear stuff better. It's awesome. There are some yeah. people that should have done a little bit better hearing this deer season because there's been some really weird, bad things that have happened in Michigan this this deer season in the last six days. Mm. We're going to cover those when we come back. Stay tuned. The Sportsman's Alliance works to protect your outdoor passions. For nearly four decades, the Sportsman's Alliance has fought to protect and advance hunting, fishing, trapping, and shooting in all 50 state legislatures, in the courts, in Congress, and at the ballot box. The Sportsman's Alliance continues to be the leading organization fighting coast to coast against any legislation or action that threatens your outdoor heritage, while also proactively advancing legislation that allows more opportunities for sportsmen and their families. The future of our outdoor heritage rests with the passion of sportsmen. By becoming a member of Sportsman's Alliance, you'll take an important step to help protect and promote hunting, fishing, and trapping from attacks by animal rights activists. Join the Sportsman's Alliance today to create a powerful and unified voice for sportsmen across the country. Take the guesswork out of diver duck hunting with Jeremy Ullman of MI Guide Service. Offering everything you need for a successful hunt at great prices, you're sure to have a blast. 
We offer open water blind and layout hunts in Lake St. Clair, Saginaw Bay, as well as custom hunts in Michigan's Upper Peninsula. We've also got your fishing needs covered with trips available in every season. Go to miguideservice.com to book your hunt or fishing trip today. Eagle Review is the review and ratings platform for thousands of international shooting and fishing destinations for virtually every game species. It is free of charge and it helps you to find the perfect place and to book your fishing and shooting trips directly with the owner or agent. You can easily find unique places in virtually every corner of the world. Find your dream destination by selecting a location, a method, and the species that you are interested in. Once you've made a selection, you can easily compare destinations and find out what other people have to say about their experiences. It's the way to find your dream adventure, compare your options and choose your trip. You can then help others finding their dream adventure by writing your review. So join the community and share your passion. Eagle Review. Find your dream shooting and fishing destinations. Hot Shot Outfitters in Port Hope, Michigan is the destination for whitetail deer, crow, waterfowl, rabbit, predator, and turkey hunts. We have cabins, over 30,000 non-fenced acres, and a passion for delivering fair chase hunts to you and your family. Reserve your hunt at HotShotOutfitters.com today. Welcome back to the Greenway Outdoors. We are going to get right in. I'm sorry, dive right into our next segment. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is not nice. Yeah. So you get for being sick. Um, so anyways, let's talk about hunter safety. Um, there were quite a few incidents this year that where, uh, where hunting was, uh, you know, there was someone, they had a gun, and something goes wrong, and you know, it's like everybody's worst nightmare and everyone's like, oh, you're carrying a gun. It's not safe. Well, <laughs> it's perfectly safe if you take the proper precautions. And there's uh, several people, several stories we're going to talk about where these people just didn't do the right thing. And the one note I do want to make, though, deal with it. there was 500,000 hunters in Michigan walking around in the woods with guns and not no, one, one mass, mass shooting. shooting. <laughs> there it is. Just to point that out. So this year... Um, there are two big stories that I'm aware of. Um, there was one in Antrim where a guy uh, shot a lady. She was a 72-year-old woman. Uh, it's believed that she was out hunting also. Um, good for well, 72 not, years say, old? Sure, yeah. I was going to say good um, for her, but then I was like, That's no, according that to the mean? article I read anyways. Um, <clears throat> and, uh, and he shot her, mistaking her for a deer, I guess. I don't know if she wasn't wearing orange or what, but... I don't think we can make it her fault. I, I, you know, no. I mean... How do you how do you mistake something that isn't a deer for a deer? Like what did they, he they move specifically. They have a they're they're colored a certain way. Like there's no reason. How far away was to, she? Um, I want to say she was like a couple hundred yards away. So he was shooting with a rifle. You know. So I. I what? Like he shot her. Did she die? I, yeah, right? yeah. Yeah. And he shot her with a rifle. Yeah. From two hundred yards away. Uh, I don't know oh, the don't exact know. distance. I know it was a good distance. I'm distance. They're not sitting is like right a, next to each other. The distance is important. Mm -hmm. um, there was there was a guy last year who was shooting with a uh, with a pistol, mm -hmm. and he shoots two hundred yards away with a pistol. Not going to hit anything with a pistol at two hundred yards after shooting light. <laughs> Classic. <laughs> at Classic. what he thought was a deer, and he hit a lady, and she died. Like how, wait, wait. there's so many things wrong with. <laughs> How was your defense? Oh, sorry, I was shooting with a pistol at 200 yards and hit her after dark. I don't know what happened. It gets like... thought she was a deer. <laughs> I think it's just incredible that... Not that there's anything good about this situation, Yeah. but the fact that he could hit something <clears throat> at 200 yards with a yeah. pistol. Like, coincidence? I, or like... I, 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 don't, I don't know. know. That's it, Like, when you say 200 yards, like, I've seen a lot of different 200 yards. Yeah. Like, yeah, I've seen it where it's like, I'm looking at a field open, and it's a straight path... And there's woods on each side, and it seems 200 yards seems pretty close. Mm -hmm. And, like, I can make out something pretty strong at 200 yards. And then I've seen 200 yards where it's like, how did you – what's that movie, Wanted, where they where they, <laughs> where they spin the bullets? Oh, yeah. Boom, and then it goes <laughs> – Yeah, where you'd have to, like, do that. Uh, you, you see 
what's her name? Jennifer Aniston's. No, Angelina Jolie. No, Angelina Jolie's <laughs> what? butt momentarily in that movie. And we're going to talk about that? <laughs> I just, <laughs> just really wanted to make that note. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, um, yeah, she we, they, like, spin the ball. <laughs> my mom's like, how, you know what, Philip, we let him have too many movies. We let him, <laughs> PG-13 was never How does he know him. about that? Yeah. I don't know. We'll have a talk with him. <laughs> when he gets home. Um, but when you would... Uh, uh, like you'd literally have to like spin the bullet to get through like the the mass of trees mm-hmm. and wood that would be 200 yards. So you like, kind of wonder what that is. But like, how did he mistake? And to me, that sounds more like a case of like he had a black powder gun. He was trying to unload because mm-hmm. it was after light, and he's like, ah. But like at the ground, mm-hmm. not did people unload like like the Fourth of July or like... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, no, to to get 200 yards, like you're. <laughs> You're aiming right at what, it, or probably high a little, yeah. you know. But yeah. to me, that like hunter safety is so important. But when you hear the stories of like what goes wrong, you've got another story too about like a kid and a dad or something like there that. There was a dad up in a tree stand, and they finished their hunt. The kid came over to the dad, and the dad said, "Okay, well here, take my gun while I get down." Lowers the gun down to the kid. Kid goes to take the gun, and the gun goes off and kills the dad. Mm. I mean, it's why is the dad's gun loaded? You know, how, I don't remember how old the kid was, but like, hey, here comes my gun. Make sure you point it away from me. Like, if you're hunting with your kid, you're imparting knowledge on them. You're and teaching you, you them. You never how to put hunt. your finger and on the trigger unless you're going to shoot the gun. Yeah, like, there's, safety there's should have been on. No reason that should happen. It shouldn't have been loaded. You're unloading a gun from a tree. Unloaded as you're getting down. You're not hunting as you're climbing. Oh, there's a deer. You yeah. Know, like no. My my dad when I was a kid growing up, it was like he was like old-fashioned ruthless strict when it came to like hunter safety good i still remember that exactly i, I was rem- nervous when you said old-fashioned ruthless and i'm like what are you gonna say <laughs> did he hit you no uh, <laughs> no um what would happen was when we would go back we'd go in the backyard and we'd shoot um air guns uh um bb guns yeah we'd shoot pellets um and what he would do is he'd take a box so a pellet gun yeah and he would fill it with um yeah, but I think you, they're not air guns. You're right. Yeah. But um, no, nah, I call them an air gun. You call them it's airsoft compressed air. Now. Like that's just what nope. everyone calls them. It's like no, clean air. Airsoft is plastic. Yeah. There's a pellet gun. A pellet gun you pump with air. That's yeah. a thing. I shot metal. Could have killed a bird. Okay, but whatever. <laughs> so anyhow, uh, what he would do is he'd take a cardboard box and he'd fill it with rows of carpeting. So like when oh, you yeah. shot through the box, it would hit the carpeting and fall and not go through. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And uh, um, but shooting a gun at my house was like a cool thing. But also like a nerve-wracking thing because... You guys are packed in there. Well, you were on the edge of getting in trouble. So like you could partake in hunting in shooting, but it came at a risk. If at any point you mishandled the gun, pointed it in the wrong direction, did anything wrong whatsoever, you were in trouble for like the day. So like to go shoot a gun, you had to accept that there was possible consequences if you messed up. Yeah. yeah. Which... Looking back at my dad's mentality, the problem with a lot of the way people perceive things is they don't have consequences. Whereas with shooting a gun, you have dire consequences mm-hmm. if you do something wrong. Even just carrying a gun, you have consequences. So I kind of I kind of agree with the, the philosophy that my dad instilled in me. Like, oh, we can shoot guns today. We'll go out in the backyard and shoot them. Mess up and your day's ruined. Mm-hmm. You know yeah. what I mean? It's like, well, do I even want to shoot because I might screw this up? And that's the mindset that you should have. Yeah. Can you imagine what this country would be like not if, to get political if every single person was, was like, raised that way <laughs> like if everyone understood it mm-hmm. and was around it it'd be much different and that was my point though there still is it's not a it's not prevalent like it should be but there was 500,000 hunters in Michigan with guns running around the woods and there was not one mass shooting and people were like well of course not well what do you mean of course not yeah because there's a lot of guns and we talk about one or two mistakes that happened and those were mistakes because of the numbers like sheer numbers yeah. in anything require mistakes by human individuals when yep. you add the human component. Sure. But overall, to have two or three mishaps in five hundred thousand people, people with guns, yeah. it's it's pretty remarkable. Especially when you consider that like people driving around, how many car accidents just happened over the last weekend in Michigan? And, I'm and sure it wasn't a malicious. Bunch, and the the ratio is much higher. But we're not like, oh, well, we should get rid of cars. <clears throat> like, and it know. wasn't malicious. The the accidents that happened yeah. were not malicious. At least. Mm-hmm. I don't know what that don't la- I don't so. know what that lady said. <laughs> 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 but uh, um, another accident that happened was this guy. So he shoots this big buck, right? Mm-hmm. Walks up to the big oh, buck. I saw this. He gets a oh. picture with it, but didn't check to make sure it was dead. 
and that thing whooped him good. Yeah, it he, made like a Y in his head. Yeah, it was like this. It like you could see skull. Yeah, the the antler because yeah, like these powerful two hundred pound monster of a deer. How powerful it is. Yeah, jacked him up. Yeah. yeah, if you walk up to a deer and its eyes are closed, it's not dead. It don't don't approach it. Walk away. Yeah, because when a deer dies, he'll have his eyes open. They close their eyes to make you think they're dead or they're hiding. Yeah, but if their it's, eyes are it's open, rough. Now props to him though. Thanks After for giving the tip happened, of the week mid mid, took, mid thing. And I mean his, tip of the uh, week mid conversation. He says it. When are we gonna do the tip of the week? Let's do it mid talk with no prep into it. Good call, Jeff. What are you talking about? You just gave up the tip of the week. Don't walk up to a deer. That was the tip of the week? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Did you change it? Yeah. That wasn't the tip of the week. You didn't tell me that was the tip of the week. That was just the tip of the hey, week. Hey, tip of the week. <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, but props to that guy because he, after that, after he got scalped by that deer, uh, he he took a picture with it. The, the, he did. The he sat right next grin, to it, like, blood <laughs> flowing down his face. <laughs> you got to get the picture, though. Oh he put God. the hat on to, like, not look like he was Especially dying. that deer. Like, that was a good deer. It was a huge buck. Yeah. But, yeah, you got to be real careful walking up to him. You got to do the, the gun poke that you see, like, in every safari movie. Yeah, you're like, at a minimum, a kick. But even like, Jumanji, they do that. They poke them. Yeah. They poke them to make sure they're... Get a stick. Be far away. Yeah. Because the thing gets up. Yeah. I wonder if he'd wait. Like, you're supposed to wait a certain amount. After you shoot a deer, you wait a while to, yeah. to let it go die. Sure. I wonder if he gave it time. Because it's a nice buck. Maybe he just had buck fever. If he hit it and poorly, he just then it ran could after go it. sit for an hour. You know, like, you're supposed to hit it, you know, right in the vitals. But if you hit it bad. I wish maybe. I knew. It. I would just wish I knew the backstory. Yeah. yeah. Like, was you're he never like, going to know it. <laughs> maybe there was three pictures taken before the deer went nuts. And maybe yeah. there's like a sequence of pictures where the deer's coming too. <laughs> so, like, the first <laughs> one is like. And the second one he goes, the third one he goes. <laughs> it's like, goes. what movie was it? Um, Tommy Boy? Where the deer, it, it was that movie, oh, right? Yeah, the Tommy when Bo- the deer's in the, they, they hit the a deer, so they put it in the car, and then they're doing whatever, and they look in the rear view mirror, and they see the deer go. Like, <laughs> oh! <laughs> I've never seen Tommy Boy. What? That's disappointing. That's a good movie. Really? I feel that like we should have watched that at some point in some hunting. <laughs> With every road trip that trip we've ever been on. Yeah. Every flight. Yeah. I gotta quit just watching Reacher over and over again. <laughs> <laughs> He's got no rules. <laughs> <laughs> Reacher lives by his own rules. When we come back, we're actually going to be talking about the stupidest subject that I've ever heard of. In the city of Ann Arbor, which means no surprise for me, no surprise that they would come up with something so stupid. These people raised one hundred eighty-five thousand dollars not to help the poor, but instead to sterilize deer. Ugh. That way, they quit having babies because there's too many of them. Because who would hunt for them, right? right Let's spend right. 185 grand, and not, we'll talk about it when we come back. Stay tuned. <laughs> ago that two millennials and lifelong best friends set out on a mission to protect the future of conservation. At the present moment, 60% of hunting and fishing licenses and conservation organization memberships are sold to white males over the age of 55. What many don't realize is these sales and memberships are what protect our waterways, wetlands, fisheries, our data collection, our species sustainability efforts, our forest, the Department of Natural Resources, and anti-poaching efforts. The $373 billion outdoor industry is looking for the answer to attract millennials and Generation Z. Welcome to the Greenway Outdoors.
The key to inspiring millennials and Generation Z to hunt, fish, and practice conservation efforts is not through traditional outdoor TV. We have to reach them the way they want to be reached, and that's through entertaining and educational reality TV show content. And to reach the masses that we need to protect the future of conservation and the outdoor industry, we have to take it mainstream, and the Greenway Outdoors will do it. Okay. Ready? When you when you frantically move your feet, I'll pull you back out. Okay. Kill okay. click with your feet, and I'll help him pull you out. You want his right leg or his left leg? Uh, the right one smells worse. I'll take it because I already. <laughs> That's know the one. one that pee runs down. <laughs> what? We hold his legs apart. We go click your heels when you want to come. <laughs> <laughs> I'll stop. It's in my bag. It's in my. It's in my thing. Why don't you, you dig it out? Cause I don't. It's gonna be at like the bottom, and there's all kind of snacks. Don't touch the snacks. <laughs> those snacks aren't for you. Those, those snacks aren't meant for you. <laughs> oh, berries. We could probably eat these. Yeah, eat those. Please. Yeah, eat them. Please. Please, 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 please eat them. Please eat them. Uh, blah. We need the ratings. Just eat them. <laughs> Nip the steel. I try to get at you. Hook him like it's hot. <laughs> all right. Now I'm done. The True Reality Show platform offers tons of laughs, and each episode teaches a specific tactic for a specific species. In a 30-minute program, we cover the conservation of the species, the gear needed for the tactic, the actual hunting and fishing trip, a Bible lesson, and we show you how to cook it. An action-packed, hilarious, but educational show millennials love. Welcome back to the Greenway Outdoors podcast. Uh, we're going to start with our social media comment of the week before I get into the mass stupidity of the city of Ann Arbor. Just <laughs> 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 <Be> stupid. <laughs> I'm being really careful about giving my opinion because I want people to come to it on their own terms, <laughs> and I don't want to be biased. But our social media comment of the week was chosen by Jeffrey, and it was on a picture that I posted of our shotgun with a uh, mallard that I killed. Mm -hmm. And it was actually a pump Benelli shotgun, a Nova. And a comment came in that said, I have over 20,000 rounds through my Benelli Nova. I harvested my first deer, duck, goose, snow goose, speckle belly goose, sea duck, raccoon, rabbit, quail, and chucker with that gun. And that came from Richard Parks, who actually, ha excuse me, happens to be related to Ryan. That's my brother. Parks. That is Ryan's he brother. Li he lives out in Washington, and he's got two hunting dogs, a uh, draw tar and a German short hair, and he gets to go bird hunting. My baby, a she's a Chippewa. Nice. No, <laughs> what did I? She's what? a duck. <laughs> That's what I thought of. <laughs> what, what is the what is the lyrics and what did I make that? Like, maybe she's a Chippewa. <laughs> no, no, but Choctaw. Is Choctaw. It, is that a tribe? C H O C T A W. So I just made it. It's a Choctaw. It's no, a different a, word. Yeah, it's a different word for sure. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but you see where I was going with it. Yeah, like yeah. I had the I had uh -huh. the lyrics in my soul. But yeah, that's uh, I, I I like my gun and i think it's great that you can buy a gun you know put effort into it figure out which one you want and buy it and then that gun will last you as long as you take care of it for years I've at used, least two or three years <laughs> <laughs> i've used that gun and we have put that gun through some hard times you don't clean your guns no not, hey, no. not well not no. well i want like once a year at least but like <laughs> and that's bad to do but it every even time. with that my gun is still that's the thing about a pump though is you can beat the crap out of them and they yeah. still just kind of yeah. and you can use it for so many different things but i should clean my gun more because eventually as the gun wears it can become a safety problem when we do late late season duck hunting mine always would freeze up mm -hmm. my it, my i had brettas 
I had like good guns, and they would free shot with the uh, for the semi autos. So I would switch to pumps because I was like, I, I can't have that. That's too much for me. Yeah, yeah. That, your gun would especially freeze up when you were in charge of the boat and I was in charge of the guns, and I fell in through the ice. <laughs> And the first thing that hit the water was the guns. <laughs> uh oh. We we got out and you could we could shoot one, but you couldn't rack the gun. So it was just shoot and then you could open it and like <laughs> It was awful. <laughs> it was That's it how was you had to bad, hunt. It was a bad day. That yeah. It was a bad day. Well, well we went out when it was already cold, but it wasn't like insanely cold, but we hunted on like a river stretch that was really far from everyone else. Yeah. So we went out there. We went out there and when we went out there there was water, so we put all the decoys out when it was dark. And then we got set up, and then when the sun came up, the it temperature didn't. there was like there was clouds, so yeah. the sun didn't come up. It as it got light out, we're like, oh, good to warm up. It got colder by thirty degrees, not by thirty oh. degrees, but it, but by a good by enough that we're like all of a sudden I'm looking around, I'm like, there's not there was open water when we got here. I'm sure of it. <laughs> the decoys. Oh, then there was when the sun was, came up. The decoys were sitting on ice. Yeah, but with oh. the string threw down because that yeah. was it. Yeah, and I was like, uh oh. And then a sheet of ice that was super thick from a freeze that happened before yeah. came down the river and then got lodged up and blocked us in. Uh-oh. <laughs> and so now there's ice between us and this ice sheet that is real thick but not stable. And you had to break so, your way boat. through it. We had to break through it, and I fell in at this and point. Nim- so I'm, Nimrod here I'm falls in. Here just, just <laughs> Why were you useless. carrying the guns doing that? Because he was responsible for the boat. So he had the boat. He couldn't maneuver the boat and have both the guns. So I'm holding the guns for him. Why I'm putting Unloaded the with the safeties on. Why wouldn't you and just then, lay the guns in the boat? It, it, I, to be honest with you, he touches the decoys and they get tangled up. He looks at them wrong. So I just was doing the decoys in the motor and I just didn't. I think Jeremy Woman would disagree. <laughs> well, that's the case. So I was like, I got this. You just sit there. And he fell in. <laughs> with guns. So he falls in with the guns. They're... Then ducks come in, in the one little piece of water left, huge group of all greenheads, big, beautiful, plump greenheads come in, and I'm like, give me the gun, give me the gun, and he tries to aim me the gun because he's not about to turn around because he's so cold, <laughs> and he's just sitting there give like, me a ducks. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I lift, and uh, uh, I go to shoot, and it just clicks, oh, no. and like, the way it got clicked, like racked forward, it wasn't racked all the way forward, the yeah. shell, and I... I couldn't physically do it because it was that frozen. Yeah. So. Well, it's a good thing it the somehow it the the firing pin didn't reach the round and it shoot not totally. Right. Well, I would have got a duck. Your gun. But yeah, the um but maybe got a duck. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe. <laughs> so so that was just a terrible terrible day and then I had to r- get us back in, but the motor then the motor wasn't working right. Mm. And the, we didn't the paddles, you couldn't do anything cuz once we got that ice it was like this thick, which is enough. To, like, stand on and fall through consistently. Yeah. But you can't drive the boat over it. So what I – and the water was as deep as my waders. And he couldn't do nothing. He was just useless. At that point, I, like, I had started, like, slightly convulsing. And I'm like – He's, like, straight purple. If if we were able to get in just normal, it was, like, an hour and a half to get in. With a working motor and no ice. We went out for a morning hunt. (laughs) And we were supposed to be done by, like, around 10 or 11. So stupid. We didn't get in until, what, after dark? Because it took us so long to get back Who's in. We? That's Who's we? Who's and we? I'm just sit- I mean, I also got in, so we. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that makes sense. That's why you always bring a lighter with you but, into uh, the woods. There's no ground fires in the Department of Natural Resources yeah. and Waterfall areas. Please read oh, the instructions. I didn't know that's where you were. God, poacher. Please <laughs> read the instructions. <laughs> poacher. What's so, the wrap outline? So I would literally have to move the boat up two inches, get up on top of the ice, fall through, get water in my waders, move them up an inch. Get up on top of the ice. Break through, fall through, move them up an inch. And that's literally how I got us in that day. The hero. It took, saved my life that day. <laughs> saved it was life. funny because we always talk so much crap to each other. But he goes to me like two hours in, like 40 feet later. He goes, <laughs> you can tell when there's something going wrong and we're, we're, it's finally time for us to be serious. <laughs> and nice to each other. <laughs> nice. If we're nice to each other, it means our life's there's in danger. something's wrong. <laughs> he, goes, I, I, he goes, I'm worried about... How numb my chest is. Oh no, <laughs> like, that's not good. I look, I look over, and you can tell he's miserable. He's like, <laughs> and I go, I, I appreciate what you're doing for me. <laughs> he's just sitting there. 
<laughs> I, and I want to say your response was like, is it that bad? <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> like, yeah. if he's being nice, I'm scared. Because yeah. it's like, oh, no, something's wrong if he's, he's being nice to me. You scared? D- yeah, scared. Did, uh, after you got wet, did it freeze over and it was like a big crunchy, like, crust over your oh, whole body? Yeah. 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 No, like, every time I wanted to move, I have to, like. Yeah, you had to crunch yourself <laughs> free. Was, oh, it was a nightmare. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So going into the actual story and going into the city of Ann Arbor, which is a pretty liberal city in general. Uh, not that that has anything to do with it, but um, <laughs> they have typically each year, and this would be the fourth year, they do a 150 deer cull. It's an annual cull, which means they kill 150 deer because of there's so many deer in this condensed area and they don't allow hunting that they actually pay groups to come out to do population control. But that upset a lot of the city that they would come out and kill those deer. Now, those deer, they kill them, and then you would think, and I don't know this to be the fact, that they would utilize that meat accordingly. But you would think. If you you set up something that made sense where there was, like, certified hunters that could come in and use their tags to fill them, and you actually, like, worked without feelings, (laughs) like, you took your feelings out of it and you worked with the Department of Natural Resources and you made, like, a reliable way to hunt these deer uh, and take them out, you'd have a lot of hunters that could feel their tags and could get deer out of a highly populated area. Instead, <laughs> they raised $185,000, 182 in order to implement a program where they would actually sterilize deer. What that means is they would literally trap deer, put them under surgery, <laughs> even... Like they do a vasectomy. They, did they fix their 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 deviated septum too while they were in there just because? <laughs> yeah. Or were like, what? yeah. Well, it's mostly cosmetic. No, they would. So they're they're sterilizing these deer in the hopes that that will help with management without having to kill any deer, and that's like the mentality of it. So the th- problem is with this is like the overall mentality of people that don't like hunting or don't like the killing of animals are often very focused on the individual deer. So like the individual, the deer that's sterilized won't get killed. So like that's the individual deer that we care about. Whereas a hunter looks at the deer like a resource and looks at the overall population. Yeah, where I, species and... I love deer as a species more than I love an individual deer. Mm-hmm. The fact of the matter is there's more deer in the United States of America right now in the United States of America than Than there there, was ever in history because of the management and the the fact that there's hunters Mm -hmm. and there's a a, a resource that we're sustaining and maintaining and managing because it's a resource to us. Whereas when you get your feelings involved and you start making it about the individual deer as opposed to the betterment of the overall resource. Yeah. You start doing really stupid things like sterilizing deer. Yeah, and you, in in the short term, it may <laughs> seem like it's a better idea, again for the individual deer as opposed to the population. But in in long term, that could potentially have negative impacts on like on species. Like remember in Jurassic Park when they said the dinosaurs couldn't breed, then they found a way. Yeah, they're gonna make a super killer deer. Now here's not even know it. Here's what's amazing about it though: the way they're doing it. So they're calling deer, right? And it's costing the city, listen to this, in just the last couple of years, $622,675 to take out about 150 deer a year. I don't know about you, but any time you start paying people to kill animals, I don't know what they're doing with the resource. I don't know, so I can't say. I don't know if they're, I would donate it. That would make sense, so it like feed homeless people and mm-hmm. stuff like that. But any time you have people spending asinine amounts of money in order to do that it's an insane it's an insane thing like it's it's it it makes no sense so you're spending money taxpayers money on something instead you could have other people paying to do that thing yeah so people would line up for days but the people who live there if you manage that's what they want they think that that's what's right but they have no knowledge of what is really healthy for that Mm -hmm. species so if you actually manage it with the dnr and you had it where it was maybe even run like a managed waterfall area where people were able to come in, hunt these deer, pay for a license, shoot the deer, utilize the meat for their families or donate it, and maintain it that way, you wouldn't spend any money. 
You'd make money. The deer, yeah, you'd make money. The deer would be better off, and you, the deer population would be just as good off. You wouldn't be putting deer under surgery, which is the stupidest thing I've ever seen. <laughs> that is dumb. And you'd be maintaining the species and actually utilizing the resource as opposed to, like, sterilizing a resource. I mean, it's like, I can't even think of something as dumb. It's like uprooting a, 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 a big stalk of corn. Like, let's take it out before it before it produces anything. Produces anything. It makes no sense. It's like, how ridiculous are you that you don't see that that deer creating new deer and us utilizing it is a good thing? Right. Like, there's more being born that way. Mm -hmm. There's more existence of life. There's more existence of a deer population that way. Well, they, they care about the individual deer, but they also don't want to hit them with their cars, so they want to, you know. Cut their nuts off. It's like, what? <laughs> yeah, what? What is what is your end goal here? Like, <laughs> what is your? End? They just they don't have any knowledge of what the facts are yeah. about the whole situation. Well, it's because they're not going based on facts. They're going based on emotion. Right. That poor deer. Oh no, Bambi. You know, that's not. Yeah. Right. That's not how the real world works. When we come back, we're going to be talking to Ray about muskrat trapping. He's going to be calling in. Stay tuned. Riverside Charters, located in Manistee, Michigan, offers guided fishing trips year-round. We target steelhead, chinook and coho salmon, and brown and lake trout. Fish the big lake on our 38-foot tiara, or the Manistee River on our enclosed and heated 22-foot Rivermaster jet boat. We do all the heavy lifting for you, so you and your buddies can focus on catching the fish. We'll even clean and bag your catch for you. Find out more at RiversideCharters.com. Jenks Pheasant Farm in Silverwood, Michigan has been family owned and operated for more than 20 years. We provide realistic upland bird hunt opportunities for any experience level. We have seasoned guides and dogs eager to make your hunt a success. Explore our fields thick with sorghum, canary grass, and good old weeds, which are great for bird cover. We have creeks to help beat the heat during early season, and we'll even clean your birds for you when you're done. Book your hunt now at JenksPheasantFarm.com. The Sportsman's Alliance works to protect your outdoor passions. For nearly four decades, the Sportsman's Alliance has fought to protect and advance hunting, fishing, trapping, and shooting in all 50 state legislatures, in the courts, in Congress, and at the ballot box. The Sportsman's Alliance continues to be the leading organization fighting coast to coast against any legislation or action that threatens your outdoor heritage, while also proactively advancing legislation that allows more opportunities for sportsmen and their families. The future of our outdoor heritage rests with the passion of sportsmen. By becoming a member of Sportsman's Alliance, you'll take an important step to help protect and promote hunting, fishing, and trapping from attacks by animal rights activists. Join the Sportsman's Alliance today to create a powerful and unified voice for sportsmen across the country. Do you run or own a hunting, shooting, or fishing travel service? And do you want to expand your international client base? Become a host on eaglereview.com. Join the fastest growing free online hosting community for hunting and fishing services in the world. Easily create your own page and don't forget to share your best pictures and videos. On Eagle Review, you can share your contact information, your website, and links to your social media accounts so you can generate more traffic than ever before. After hiring your services, guests can leave reviews on your page to help you build a good reputation. Now that's marketing. No middleman. You are in direct contact with your clients. Need any help setting up your page? Our team of passionate hunting, shooting, and fishing enthusiasts are standing by to help you out. So go to eaglereview.com now and get started. I'm Dean Stovall of Whitney's Almost Everything Outdoors. We are the premier guide service on Lake Whitney for striper fishing, hog hunts, duck hunts, and crappie fishing. We can sleep up to 30 people, our house rentals just a short walk away from the water. A gift certificate for one of our hunting or fishing packages makes the perfect gift for that hard to shop for guy in your life. Go to waeoutdoors.com and book your hunting fishing trip today. 
Hotshot Outfitters in Port Hope, Michigan is the destination for whitetail deer, crow, waterfowl, rabbit, predator, and turkey hunts. We have cabins, over 30,000 non-fenced acres, and a passion for delivering fair chase hunts to you and your family. Reserve your hunt at hotshotoutfitters.com today. Hello and welcome back to the Greenway Outdoors podcast. That Thank was you. pretty cool that <laughs> you're welcome, Jeff. <laughs> that was pretty cool that Ray's commercial just aired directly before we actually have him on. Ray, are you there? I am, buddy. What's happening, man? Wh- what's up, buddy? <laughs> Not too much, man. Do you miss me? I do. I do. I'm waiting for you guys to come up. That's not what you said on the phone when we've been talking. (laughs) (laughs) Ray, I got to ask you, we've been doing hunts with you since day one. When we talked to you, it was just like a concept the first time we came out for a rabbit hunt. It's like almost four years ago. Yeah. So were you nervous the first time you were on air with us, Ray? I was. I was. You wore your nice pants that day. (laughs) I, I still got those nice pants. <laughs> he has like these rabbit pants that are all ripped up pretty good. In his in well. his defense, though, uh, b- it being our first year, I don't think we were nervous, but I think we were a little awkward just because we didn't have all of our stuff down yet, and we like full interviewed him, and it was just yeah, <laughs> we hadn't done many interviews yet. <laughs> <laughs> what, what about you guys? Were you nervous when hunting meeting Ray? Yeah, no. <laughs> oh, when you were on camera, you're doing your first... I don't think so. No, I think that we were never nervous on camera because we the odds of us ever making it to actual TV were so slim to none at the time that <laughs> no it was like... Let's see this, we'll just do whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it doesn't matter. But it did matter. <laughs> so Yeah, it did. I would say that uh, um, we were never nervous because the odds of us making it were so slim that it didn't feel like you needed to be nervous. And then once we actually made it on real TV... It didn't really, it, did, it didn't really matter. We were like, already we were passed. Good. Yeah, we were already past any nervous days. Yeah, you made it. Well, Ray, we're glad we met you, and we've aired your commercial every single episode of the Green Outdoors podcast and TV show since day one because we love you so much. I know you guys are awesome, guys. I sure appreciate everything. No, we appreciate you. So, how did your deer season go? Because you just you're, you're six, seven days in. How many how many deer have you got down for your uh, for your hunters? We have forty right now. And I was just getting a call to go drag another one. Nice. Wow. Right. Nice. Um, Ray, we're going to be coming up December 1st and 2nd, and we're going to be doing a muskrat trapping episode. And you do turkey hunts, and right now the audience is seeing all kinds of pictures, you and Cheyenne holding the big turkey right now, and uh, um, all different types of hunts that you do. But you say that you're a muskrat trapper by trade. What do you mean by that? I am. It's one thing I'm really good at is muskrat trapping. Try to trap about five or six hundred a year. Whoa, five or six hundred a year? That's amazing. Now, what do you what do you do with them? I sell the furs and I try to get them out of the ditches for the farmers because they cause so many problems in the in the tiles and the drop structures. What do they do? Uh, they just plug all the tiles. The tile runs out, and what tile is, is it drains the land for the crops to grow better. And the mushrats actually crawl in them tiles and plug them up. So that the tiles can't drain properly. Oh, okay. Where where did you learn how to musk? Like where did you learn? Where did he learn anything? That guy's a beast. <laughs> he's, yeah, he's good at every type of hunting. But he wh- says that's the thing he's really good at. I know. Like, that's like he's scary. not great at everything else. <laughs> because he doesn't say that he's good at anything else, and he's great at everything. So it's terrifying to think what he can do to a muskrat. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm just wondering, where did you? Who taught you what you know about muskrat trapping? I had an old friend. Uh, Glenn Phillips taught me how to trap. Glenn? Uh, yep, when I was about 10 years old. And then what I did was I, I trapped a bunch <coughs> of fur, and the only thing I did was kept buying traps with my uh, fur money. Nice. Okay. That's awesome. That's a, yeah. How much do you get, like, right now in today's market? What do you get for 500 muskrats? About 1000 bucks. <laughs> so about 2 bucks a muskrat then. You got her, buddy. Yep. And in how many days does it take to get four or five hundred muskrats? He's like one. <laughs> yeah, about, about six. Six. Six or, seven. six or seven. Wow. Whoa. So when we do this, that's going to be a big. Geez, that's going to be a lot. That's a yeah. Now, Ray, have you ever eat? Have you ever eaten them? Yes, I have. They're called marsh rabbit in the restaurants. If you went 
to a, a restaurant that served them. It's called Marsh Rabbit. Marsh Rabbit. I don't think I've ever seen that on a menu. Yeah, I think we eat at different restaurants. Yeah. Do they have that they at might. Shelly's? <laughs> I think it. I think they serve that at McDonald's. I think it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's called a Big Mac. I think is what <laughs> the McNugget. It's a McMarsh Rabbit. <laughs> <laughs> Those are my favorites. So, so you trap the muskrats, and what what kind of waterways are we going to be targeting? You said the ditches, but like what? Yeah, be, what's the tactic uh, we're going to be using? What kind of traps are we going to be using? Where are we going to be setting them? We're probably going to be using conibears and a colony trap. A conibear is a a trap that they swim through, and then it it, it springs shut and it drowns them. Okay, it's like and a two-sided a mouse trap. trap. Correct. And a colony trap is where you can get multiple mush rats, like three or four mush rats at one time in a colony trap. They got little flaps on a door, and they swim in, but they can't swim out. Is that like those big, uh, those big flat cage-looking ones that they use for squirrel? <laughs> kind of like that, but you can They got to be a certain size for the law. Oh, okay. So okay. You can only use them. I think it's six by six by thirty-six, I believe, or thirty-two. Okay. So it's like a mega-sized crab trap. Yep. For someone that wants it. to get into muskrat trapping, like into it to start, obviously for the big payday. Um, <laughs> what? <laughs> what, <laughs> what would you recommend, like, for a starter kit for somebody? Like where to go, what to do, and how to do it. Would you recommend like going to talk into a farmer and buying this kind of trap and setting up in this waterway, or like what would what would yep. be your game plan? I I buy all my traps from S and T Fur Harvester. They're right in Michigan. They're great people. You have their stuff in two days. I I would if I was a kid and, and was gonna do it because you know five years ago the mush rats were worth nine dollars a piece. Oh, oh, so it's recent that it dropped. Oh yeah, yep, and then it just fell out, but. Yeah, and we do it mainly, honestly, just for the farmers to to protect their tiles and their drop structures. You know, it's not a money thing with us. We just love to do it, and we help people out, and that's the most important thing. Right. Yeah. Okay. I like it. Now, Ray, do you do you utilize the fur at all, or do you just sell it? And uh, um, yeah, we, like, what my, what do people my, use my, it for? Like, what does the fur utilize for? I think they use it for underwear. It's nice and soft. And <laughs> underwear. <laughs> Is he serious? I don't. You never know with Ray. Ray, are you serious? No. No. <laughs> so, what do they use it for, though? I think they put. <laughs> <laughs> He's got another gross story yeah. for us, right? I think they use it for cuffs and uh, collars. That's what I believe. Oh, okay. Sure. Could yeah. you make a coat out of it? See, me and my daughter want to make uh, mittens, and they're because when you guys feel them, you'll say, "Wow, they are really soft." Yeah, yeah. It'd be, I think, think that'd be mittens. cool. You need a good number of them to make. Anything because you're not getting like all the fur off of oh, no, yeah. all of it. You know, you get like a certain amount of it, and you need quite a few to make maybe not gloves, but like if you're going to make a coat, you need a, a good amount. How many do you think you need to make gloves, Ray? Well, he goes, too stupid. <laughs> <laughs> How many, Ray? We took probably, probably a couple days worth anyway. Really? Okay. Yeah, so so you're, you're not getting much. Do you utilize like all the fur or just like the back fur? Nope, they use the belly fur. The belly oh, fur. Oh, okay. I was going to say that. That's what yeah, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, everyone knows that. <laughs> Ray, do you have any, like, for us to prepare anything that you that we can use, like, your lessons learned so that we know not to do that for sure when we come out? I, well, you guys are going to have to get on an exercise machine. Because we got to keep up with him. Yeah. He goes, no, you guys are going to entertain me. <laughs> <laughs> what, what does that mean? <laughs> you can do all the stuff I did wrong. <laughs> no, I'll show you. Yep. Well, we're looking forward to it, Ray. Thank you so much for calling in. As always, uh, go to Hot Shot Outfitters. If you're a new hunter that wants to get into hunting, whether it's goose hunting, turkey hunting, deer hunting, I, he'd probably find you a bear. Whatever you want, reach out to Ray. He's in the thumb of Michigan at hotshotoutfitters.com. Go there, check him out, and actually get guided by somebody who cares about your success, who actually knows what he's doing, and honestly has given me probably 20% of my overall hunting knowledge. So, Ray, thank you for calling in. We appreciate it. You have a good night. Thanks, guys. You guys have a good evening, too. Thank you. Thanks, Ray. Thank you, Ray. See ya. See ya. So, as always, go to our Instagram pages, go to our Facebook pages, and our YouTube page. If you're listening to this on iTunes, you could be watching it and seeing our ugly faces instead. So... <laughs> Go to the new radio media app and watch it live at 5 o'clock 
p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Wednesdays, or you can go to the Greenway Outdoors YouTube channel and see it there. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks so much for tuning in, and stay green.